All right, I'm going to show you how this carbon footprint activity looks and uh, looks like and how it's used. And here's basically the setup that would look like on a table. And what you would do is sort of invite somebody to see if they want to know what is your carbon footprint and uh, just give them a, a brief sort of definition of the fact that it represents your contribution to climate change. Uh, in other words, how your choices um, contribute to carbon in the atmosphere and thus green and thus that's a greenhouse gas and thus climate change. And so on the left side here we've created sort of a scale where the tons of carbon dioxide are put on the y-axis and of course the more um, there is the worse off you are because the more greenhouse gases the more global warming there is. So people then analyze each area of their life one by one. So first they would look at their flights and if they want to see the source of where this information came from they can use a QR scanner and look at that source. So they would decide do they fly a few times in Asia, a few flights within Southeast Asia and one long distance, a few flights within Southeast Asia and a couple long distance flights per year. And I'll stop reading but you can sort of follow along. And so then based on what they think they do, um, I'll just do sort of myself here. Um, they would take that and then they would place that onto the graph and try to line it up nice and nice there. So they can sort of start to see a quantification. Then they move on to how they eat. So based on those options, I would choose this one. And then I would put that again onto here. It's a little bit hard for me to do this while I'm doing the camera. Uh, and then they would look at how they get around and place that on here. So what you can start to see, and as they do this, because I've tested this, they start to realize, oh, well, my flights are my biggest contribution so far. Uh, and then they take a look at um, these buying options. And I've made a couple errors. So this should be average shopper and concerned about buying local and recycle a bit. And this one is average shopper and not concerned about buying local and recycle a bit. So then based on that, um, for me, I'm there. And then uh, looking at, this is one that people overlook. Um, when you have your money in a bank, it's usually invested in very unsustainable things. Um, unless you actually find a bank that doesn't. So that adds to your carbon footprint as well. And again, it's easier when you're not trying to run a camera. And uh, then the last one is basically your recreation. So people can actually skip this step if they do carbon neutral activities, which are like just physical activities with your body. Um, but for a lot of us, it's this way, occasionally going out. So then now they can actually see what their carbon footprint approximation is. So mine is about six tons. So then the next part is the reveal. So this actually flips open and it reveals a couple things. So the first thing it reveals is um, what the Singaporean average is. So they get to compare themselves. So in this case, I would say, okay, well, I'm better than the average Singaporean. And then the next one is what the world average is which is about four. So I'd say, oh, well, you know what, I'm more than the world average. But then most importantly is, what is the sustainable footprint? And so according to the World Research Institute, that is two tons. So I can see that I'm three times what is sustainable. So from there, um, the rest of EarthFest actually has um, tables by other organizations addressing each one of these so people can actually go and find out what options they have. But people often, as they you know, do this experiment, they're like already drawing their own conclusions without any prompting about, okay, well, you know, I should focus, my biggest, my biggest one is here, so um, one thing that you can bring up is, well, why don't you carbon offset? If you carbon offset, then that disappears, and then all of these sort of go down. And then when you start going through that process, you can start to eliminate and reduce your carbon footprint. Now in Singapore, it's pretty well impossible at this point to be able to get to the um, world's um, sustainable average without carbon offsetting all of your other um, 
emissions as well. But the idea is to always get better and better. And a lot of these are only only exist because we're not using carbon neutral sources uh, for energy and for transportation fuel. So if actually, uh, for example, if we were to use carbon neutral um, fuel for transporting goods and, and uh, things like that, then uh, a vegan diet would actually be carbon neutral. So that would disappear as well. If we use carbon neutral for public transit, um, that would disappear as well. Um, and if we had really, really good um, energy for running factories and all those types of things, that could be carbon neutral. So eventually all of these could disappear, not only through us making better choices, but also through just technology and revamping our systems. So there's a lot of richness that can come from this activity. And we find that it's really um, one where you don't have to prompt the visitor to say a lot. They actually start realizing it as they build it because they know which one they're picking up. And as they're picking it up, they're actually comparing in their mind the sizes and realize, oh, well, this one, this one is worse and, and those types of things. So that just helps them, them get an idea. And then we're sort of playing with the idea is once you, once you build your carbon footprint, we're thinking of maybe getting some stamps so that people can stamp themselves to remember that number because it's such an important number. So that might be another uh, thing to consider. So that's how our, our carbon footprint activity works.